Hello and welcome to the Sastranti YouTube video where I'm going to be talking through a very quick introduction to risk. Now risk is one of the most important topics in the SEMA syllabus. It's very, very important for P2 and even more important for P3, but you will also need to consider it throughout your various case study exams. So when you're thinking of your operational case study, your management case study, and particularly your strategic case study, risk is very important. It's very important as well that we understand the fundamental underlying concept of risk and what risk actually is because some people misinterpret what they mean by risk and there is quite a strict definition of it within the SEMA syllabus. And if you are interested in videos like this, if you've enjoyed this video or if you enjoy this video and you want to see more of them, then please like the video and subscribe to the Astranti YouTube channel below. And if you want more information on the company, then please visit the website www astranti.com. So we're going to start now by just looking at a, a very brief introduction, a very brief example in to risk. And the context of the example I'm going to use relates to going to the shops, going out shopping. So imagine that we are going out shopping. And now you think of going out shopping as just a mundane activity or an exciting activity depending on your view on shopping but actually when you go out shopping you yourself are putting yourself under the chance of feeling the effects of risks there's the risk that you may run into a friend and get chatting and then miss an appointment or there's the risk that you might be hit by a car or there's the risk that you'll get involved in some sort of accident. Maybe you'll step in wet cement and be stuck there forever. There's the risk that you'll have your wallet stolen or your credit card stolen or the risk that you just might spend too much or you might be overcharged or you might not get the correct amount of change back from your purchase. All of these are risks that you expose yourself to when you go shopping. And we're going to apply this to a business now by using the example of Sam and Sam's coffee shop. And Sam opens his coffee shop and is exposed to many different risks. There's the risk that he'll lose his investment. He spends all his money opening his coffee shop and it's a complete failure and he loses all that money. There's the risk that he'll have no customers. That his coffee shop is okay but it's not as good or it's too expensive compared to the other coffee shop down the road and so he gets no customers. Could be that he breaks a food safety law. Maybe he's been leaving his cakes out for too long and they've been going stale and he's breaking all sorts of laws and then the food safety standards people come in and they shut him down. There's the risk that customers might steal his products or his employees might steal his products. Maybe they are positioning the cooler with the fizzy drinks and the orange juices etc too close to the entrance and exit and customers are or not customers thieves are coming off the street and just quickly nabbing a can of pepsi or something from the cooler and then leaving again could be that he has staffing issues no one wants to work for him or the staff that he have are not pulling their weight and they're being quite slapdash in their cleaning or they are rude to the customers etc or it could even be that he's just not getting the best quality ingredients the reason why his coffee shop is not doing very well is because he's not getting good quality coffee beans and as a result that's producing poor quality coffee and that is leading to the undesirable outcome of slow business so the formal definition now and this is an important formal definition for you to consider for the SEMA syllabus, so please make sure you are aware of this, is that risk is the potential that a chosen action will lead to an undesirable outcome. So, for example, looking back at Sam and his coffee shop, he goes to a certain supplier because they're going to offer him coffee beans at a good rate. What's the risk that that chosen action to use that supplier will lead to an undesirable outcome of poor quality coffee beans when he hires a particular staff member 
What is the risk that that staff member will turn out to be a poor employee? And so on. And risk generally forms in or falls into the category of an upside risk. This is where the outcome was better than we expected or a downside, which is where the outcome was worse than expected. And downside is the more likely thing that you will be coming across in your exam. Generally, when risk is spoken about in the SEMA exam or in any kind of way, shape or form, generally we're talking about downside risk. With upside risk, it's usually a good thing. It was better than we expected. So it's usually written off as fortunate and don't really tackle an upside risk and we don't really plan for upside risks. It's more downside risks that form the majority of your analysis when there's a chance that it will be worse than you expect. So with that definition in mind, we now know what risk is, that it's an undesirable outcome. But of course, you can't go throughout your entire life, be it personally or professionally, or from the perspective of a business, a business can't continue operating without taking risks. But it's important to know when to take risks. And that's going to be the focus of this second part of the introduction. And as the word risk suggests, there is uncertainty. You may have an incentive to undertake a risk, as in potentially big returns, but you're afraid of what could go wrong. And that's essentially what we as management accountants need to do. We need to look at the reward versus the risk. Now, if the potential reward is greater than the potential risk, as you can see illustrated here by the, the seesaw where the reward is higher, then arguably you could undertake the risk. Now, if the risk is much greater than the potential reward, then you shouldn't be undertaking it. So essentially, it's about balancing risk and reward. If the potential reward is better than the potential risk, go ahead. If the potential reward is worse than the potential risk, then don't go ahead. But there is the potential for failure in the scenario where the reward is better than the risk. And there's also the possibility of returns when the reward is or chance of reward is lower than the chance of risk. So it's not that binary that we can just say, oh, well, there's a 90% chance of success in this one. And there's a 90% chance of failure in this one here, when there is potential rewards still in that scenario with a high risk, and there's still potential failure in that scenario with the high chance of rewards. So risks must be managed against the cost of risk management. This is one way of mitigating it. And so, for example, with Sam and his coffee shop, there is the chance that his coffee shop may burn down. That is a potential risk. But then, of course, there are the rewards of operating a successful coffee shop that these must be tied against. So perhaps he could mitigate against the risk of fire by taking out insurance, taking out fire insurance. Now, if the cost of the insurance is less than the damage that a fire would cause, then yes, go ahead with the insurance because the risk is balanced with the cost of risk management there. It costs more to deal with the risk actually happening than the cost of dealing with that risk. But if the insurance were to increase and it was the point, it got to the point where the cost of insuring against a fire was actually greater than the damage that a fire would do to the coffee shop, then it wouldn't be balanced. It would make more sense just to not have insurance and pay for the fire damage if it were to occur, if the cost of the insurance is actually greater than the damage that the fire would do. So as you can see, once we have identified risks, once we understand risks, we can identify how to correctly mitigate them and manage them effectively. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. More importantly, you found it useful and you now have a good understanding into the fundamental underlying concept of what risk is. 
And if you've been interested in this video and you want to see more videos, we're also going to be talking about exam techniques. We're also going to be talking about case studies as well as other videos like this one. Then please like the video and subscribe to the Astranti YouTube channel below or visit the website www.astranti.com.